Hey there, tarot tubers. April here on Tarot and Witchery. And today I have a new hashtag to share with everyone. It's the hashtag loves me not decks. We always talk about all the things that we love about the decks. We just go on and on and gush about them. But what about the things we don't like about our decks? So this is just an invitation to creators out there to talk about, you know, in a perfect world, like I love this about this deck, but in a perfect world, you know, I would change this or this is what I don't like about it. And I, I expect I'll get some really creative responses that I hadn't even thought of. So go for it, all of you creators out there. I wanna tag four creators. First of all, Little Pink Bear, Kelly Bear. I just love the things she has to say. She has really interesting decks and I will watch her just to see how she wears her hair because she's so incredibly lovely. My two favorite cheeky bitches here on TarotTube, you probably know who you are. Levi over at Masculine Intuitive Readings and Martin over at Martin's Musings. I'm sure the two of them are gonna have some fun ripping it up. Um, okay, and then last but certainly not least, it's Candy. I wanna tag you over at Candy Soil and Soul. I know that um, you're like the sweetest person on the planet, but I'm sure you have some creative criticism being that you're such an incredible artist on what you might like to see different in some of your favorite decks. As far as my videos go, I have two of them. There's this one, which is on the indie decks that I have. These are Kickstarter indie decks. And then my next one that will come out, which is all the mass market decks. All of the decks I talk about are <laughs> listed down below in the description box. You can look at them there. And I have videos on them as well that might be kind of fun and interesting. Why don't you sign up for my newsletter down below? <laughs> so when I give out free spread ideas and cool blog posts, you will know about it. They're really infrequent, so sorry about that, but it's lastly, kind of a little disclaimer here. We're all adults. These are just my opinions on the decks that I have. It's certainly not an indictment, and I'm sure some of you have different opinions than mine. That is totally okay. We are all individuals here and adults on TarotTube. So let's uh, conduct ourselves accordingly. Oh, did you say you wanted to do something other than hang out with me? Well, I think not. <laughs> let's start out with a little known oracle. And I've talked about this one in some of my other ones, but this is the Healing Energy Cards by Leanne Peters. Uh, uh, oh man, I waited a year and a half to be able to get this. You can get it maybe right now. <laughs> She she restocked it, and so it is just so cool. I absolutely love these cards. I wish I had gone ahead and ordered the second. She has like two sets of them, and I, I could have ordered it, and I should have because I love it that much. The messages on these are so good, so healing, so intuitive. I'm going to just read one right here. Truth. Sword of Truth, Strength, Cut Through the Illusion and Negativity, Protection, Courage, Personal Power, Confront Your Issues, See the Truth. I talked about this deck in, I've talked about this deck in my video, Decks with Keywords. If you haven't seen that, you might want to check it out. Love this. Love, love, love the illustrations on it. I love the size of it. I know some of you don't. The backs, I don't love. They're kind of meh. You know, she could have done something else with that. But the one thing I really don't love about it <laughs> is how expensive it was to get here. This deck is coming from Australia and because of that, it cost an arm and a leg to get it. And that's why I should have gone ahead and ordered both of the decks at the same time so that I could have saved on the shipping costs. And who knows if they even have it anymore. So Healing Energy Cards by Leanne Peters, uh, founder of Temple of Balance is number one. Deck number two, let's alternate tarot, oracle, tarot, oracle. Deck number two, do you recognize it right here? Is the Playful Heart Tarot by Kitten Chops. Love the backs of this. Uh, probably the whole thing's going to be upside down, right? Yeah. I love the imagery on this. The imagery is, it is so playful. I didn't think I would like this. I saw this on Lisa Popeza's channel. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I can get into this, but I had to have it. And it is a really powerful inner child deck for me. I do a lot of healing when I work with this deck and I really need to be ready to go deep and go deep into things that might even be a little bit painful. 
So it's kind of a love hate relationship in that way, because I know that I'm going to have something uncovered in me. I thought this would be really fun and would cultivate a playful spirit in me, but it really just cultivates very deep healing uh, for my inner child that I think our whole lives we end up healing. What I don't like about it is honestly how slippery it is. This is the most slippery sucker deck and I just have so many jumpers and I it's it's really long too and slippery. So as I'm, I just have to go, you can see that. See, I've got to go really far out. I don't even know what it would be like to try to shuffle this thing if you were riffle shuffling it. Like you might be like, the cards are flying everywhere. Uh, I love the finish because it's like a linen finish on here or something that's really, really nice. But I would, in a perfect world, it would have something just, a, it would grab a little bit more than this. Uh, and I love the box, by the way. Love this box. It's a real, real treasure for me. Next up on my list, list is the Folktales Oracle by Hannah Willow. And um, let's just pull this out so we have it. Uh, I love this deck. This deck is a deck that I like to use for pathworking or magical work. I talked about this in depth on my three magical oracles, must have magical oracles. So if you haven't seen that one and want to see it a little bit more, it's so pretty. It is so, so pretty. And as I talked about on the on the uh, in that video, this deck is feels very present tense. It feels like stories that are going on in my life right now that I can get a hold of, and that I can really be a part of. And so that makes it really powerful for me. I can pathwork into the cards and learn a lot about myself and my feelings. The book, uh, not much in here, honestly. Uh, you know, but what's in here is powerful. What I don't like is that it's not in alphabetical order. So <laughs> I have to uh, look for it every single time. I have to look for what's going on. And look at this. See, look up here. There's no, there's no table of contents. <laughs> so I can't even go to the table of contents and then go to that page. The pages are unnumbered. <laughs> So that is super annoying about this. If she was going to redo it, I would say put numbers on it and put the numbers, put it, you know, then it would be in numerical order at least. The other thing I don't like about it, and I should just do this myself, is that it has sharp corners. And I could just trim that. I, I should just trim it. That would be something really good. But I absolutely love this deck and it is it is a, a deck that I love to pull out and feels like comfort. So that's Hannah Willow's The Folktales Oracle. Next up on this list <clears throat> is a deck that some of you are going to say, how could she possibly find anything wrong with this deck? <laughs> oh, do you know what it is just from the backs? This is the Oak, Ash, and Thorn Tarot, which hopefully is not all upside down. The illustrations on here are so gorgeous. They really, really are lovely. And um, they just, they they delight my heart. It's the perfect fall deck. It's cute, but it's not cutesy. Uh, and so there's a, there is still a seriousness to it that I appreciate. And um, yeah, I just, I really appreciate. I love the different animals that are used in this deck. And I, like I said, the illustration style is, is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Loves me not on this one. You know, honestly, it's very expensive to get here in the States. That's a bit of a loves me not. This, however, was a gift. <laughs> so I'm thinking more about her other decks and different things that I've purchased from Three Trees Tarot. Very expensive to get. The other pet peeve, and I know some of you are going to just gasp when you hear me say this, but I just feel like there could be more going on in the cards to emote what's really happening. And the thing is, is that we have animals and they're real animals. They're not really anthropomorphized animals. And so we're talking about a human experience through the eyes of animals. And you know, so we really have to stretch our brains to kind of get there. This is a great Ace of Cups. It's enough of a Rider Waite Smith nod. I can read it because I know 
what the cards mean. But as a beginner, I think I would really struggle with this. Uh, and and there's no real, there's no book for it because this is an eco-friendly deck, which I love, 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 love that this is eco-friendly. The inks are eco-friendly. That's one thing that I so appreciate about Three Trees is how they do everything ecologically. I mean, I, I, I applaud them for that. So that's a love. But yeah, sometimes I just wish, like here, perfect. This one is a nod to the Rider Waite Smith death. You know, it just doesn't have that feel to me. So I hate to say it, you guys, but sometimes the cards just miss for me. Yeah. Okay, next up on our list, I might as well go on into this one right here. <laughs> you know what this is? This is also by Three Trees Tarot. And it is their brand new Oracle deck. Now, again, one of the things that I absolutely love about this is that it's eco-friendly. All the things I said about Three Trees Tarot, what I love about this is they went borderless. I love the borderless. I I think that uh, the, the only reason why I don't want Oak Ash and Thorn Tarot to be borderless is that I can use these together and there's a clear line of what is what. And so another thing that I love is that these have good keywords but they also have these little cheat sheet cards in here that explain each card just enough to give you a little bit more and that I have these reference cards on hand. So I really love that about this. Again, sometimes I feel as though, this is a loves me not, that it just, some of them just kind of miss. I don't have a lot of connection with dragons. <gasps> I know some of you are horrified. I, I don't have a lot of connection with dragons. Sense, but some of them, yeah. like what's really going on that's quite different in each one of these? We have rest and retreat. Not a lot that's different there. So again, I feel like I wish that these were a little more emotive. Sometimes I think that these were things that the artist wanted to draw and then they tried to figure out how it felt to them. Not, not like let's create a card for retreat and that's just my thought because some of them feel just right dead on like so so absolutely emotive of what they are and then others just do not to me so next up is the this might hurt tarot by isabella rotman uh, so okay let's just start out with love this box is so luxe it just it feels luxe the magnet on this one is super nice. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> the box is so nice. You now let's even just do this so you can see like even inside the box there's stuff going on. It's just really, really nice. So packaging. That's, for me, it's part of the, the experience is coming into a card and being able to, I mean, a deck, sorry, into a deck and opening that box and that box feeling like something that I really love. Like that chariot, it's it's really interesting. So this is basically kind of a Rider weight clone almost, but with modern day twist to it. So I appreciate the modern day twist on all of but this. On yeah, this so I, I love that I can connect with the cards that way. Uh, one of the things I don't like about this, it's like, this is a love hate. So loves me, loves me not is I just like the colors are saturated, saturated, but it's, it's almost like they're, they all have this gray tone to them. And so sometimes I wish like, look at how nice and bright these are. Sometimes I wish that the cards were just a little brighter. And I know some of you don't like bright colors. The other thing uh, that I don't like is again, sometimes I feel like, uh, the modern day presentation just doesn't work for me. I wish there was a little bit more of diversity in age. And I, I wish that there were, there's some age right there. Yeah, but I wish there was a little bit more diversity in age. And I wish that there was a little bit more body diversity. I think that's one of the only body diversities that I really find in the deck. There's some alter abled, like one alter abled person in there. If this is a modern deck, then it should be 
representational of our modern day society. You know, like we are, we're, we're just, we're all different shapes and sizes and that's what makes us so incredibly beautiful. So I wish that there was just a little bit more diversity there. I will say, I love, love, love the book on this. I think that the writing style is very engaging and that she, Isabella, has some interesting conversation to add on the cards. And I would recommend this as a beginner deck for anybody who's really interested in a modern day tarot and this illustration style. Not an illustration style that I'm normally drawn to. So that's a little bit of a loves me not. It's a little cartoony for me, but I still love this deck. Next up on the oracles is The Wisdom of the Divine Feminine by, come on here, by Jenny Han and Jessica Ricchetti. It does have this thing going on, so that's a loves me not. Look, that's a loves me not for me. You know how I feel about these boxes and things that pull out like that. Oh, I've talked about this deck so many times. I think I talked about this in my ancestor deck. This is... If you haven't seen my an decks for ancestor work, you should look at that, ancestral decks. Uh, this pretty much lives on my ancestral altar. And um, I just, I love the illustration style. It's so profound. This speaks to me so deeply and so powerfully. I talk about it in depth in my video, how each card, like it has like a keyword thing that it does up here. It's got a statement that it makes. Um, it's got, you know, about the card where she speaks directly to you. She's got contemplations for you and a ritual suggestion. So the book is uh, amazing. Amazing, you guys. Absolutely recommend this, especially if you are wanting to go deeper with your divine feminine self in a way that is very direct and powerful, but soft and lovely. But look, there's fierceness. Look at that fierceness. So good. I need to get her other deck. What I don't like about it, the loves me not about it, there's something about this cardstock. <laughs> but there's something about this cardstock that if I leave the card out on my altar, and this may just be because we have higher moisture here in Oregon, it just warps in like a day or so. So I cannot leave these out on my altar without them warping. And that's what I like to do on my ancestral altar. So I know it's like a weird loves me not, but it is real nonetheless. Next tarot is by Christine Payne Towler and Michael Dowers, Tarot of the Holy Light. I think this is such a fabulous tarot. Look at these backs. I like the size of it. Although I have thought about trimming the edges off except that I couldn't do it all I couldn't take the bottoms off because like the major arcana are like this you can see and then the minor arcana have the astrological dakins on it and so it's interesting not everyone agrees with these dakins so there is that if you're like a scholar you might say I don't agree with those dakins although I love this it is more pippish because I should say it's Marseille deck um, however, it's pips with feels. So, you know, I, you can learn so much from this deck and I go on and on about this deck in other videos. This deck takes you round, down a rabbit hole and really takes you to a place where you learn so much about alchemy and ceremonial magic and the septenary and there's just so much. However, the loves me not for this deck is that you absolutely cannot have this deck without the book. Like you don't want to even get this deck if you're not committed to getting the book because she is amazing. Like I've, I have everything she's written and she's just mind blowing. She's an academic and you absolutely have to have the book. I mean, you, you just, you, you know, you just can't understand what's going on in a lot of these cards without reading up on the symbolism that she has in there. And you won't get out of it what you need to if you don't. And then we come to Shadows of Light Oracle by Haley Claire. Okay, first of all, there's something weird about this magnet. This is a loves me not. It's, I don't know, it's just not a very strong magnet. That's kind of a bummer. It's a neat box though. And it's a good sized deck. It's a really good sized deck. 
Again, this is one of those mystical boxes. I don't know how they did it, but it doesn't seem to be coming apart on me because you know, I don't like these inserts. Oh, this is foam. That's what it is. This is foam that's sitting there. So it's not going to move. So I like that about it. Okay. And then the backs, love the backs. They're super fun. Uh, let's go like this. The art on this is so stunning. I love that there are no borders. I'm a no borders person. Who's a no borders person out there? Let me know down below. Uh, yeah, it's an, I'm, I'm a no borders person and I really love that there are no borders. Another thing that I really enjoy about this deck is that it has the name of the card and then, um, well, the, the essence of the card and then the name of the card. So here it has the juggler is the name down here. And then the it's the essence of the card is balance. So uh, this one here, kindness is kind of what she's communicating, but it's coming from benevolence. Here we have acceptance and it comes from surrender. So I love the combination of words. Look at this illustration style. It is so beautiful. Uh, this was honestly, I, I was on the fence about ordering this one. It has diverse emotions in it, like blame, which comes from the victim. So there's a variety of different themes in the cards. And this is going to be a really weird loves me not you guys, because What's really bizarre about this, and this may be a timing thing. How many of you have ever had a deck where it just didn't work for you and then you, <laughs> one day it did, and I'm hoping that will happen, but I find that I use this and it feels off. Like, like I can't seem to attune with this deck. And because of that, when I draw a card, it doesn't seem to relate. Like I can't really... I can't really get into the images with the words, I, I don't know how to explain it other than like, I don't know if you've ever had this where you're like, oh, that's a perfectly gorgeous deck, but it just doesn't seem to read for me. And it just doesn't. Where I find that the deck finally makes sense for me is when I break out the book. The book is excellent on this. Um, it's got this great little poem at the beginning of each one, which is really cool. And, you know, there's, a, I like the fact that you can go like this and find uh, what's going yeah, on, but I don't know. So this is like, it's, this is deeply personal. I don't know what's going on with this deck, but for some reason, it's just like the words and the images are not getting me there. So it's like, if I go with just the words, I'm fine. If I go with just the images, I'm fine. If I try to put them together, I have to use the book. And I know that's just like a super bizarre thing that it's just a me thing I don't think it's a youth it would be a you thing necessarily it's just a me thing the cosmic visions tarot and then this is by Jessica Shackleton this was a cosmic weird one visions this tarot. Was, okay so during kind of the height of the um light workers movement look at the backs they're really really yeah. pretty one of the things I really like about it and don't like about it is it's black and white with color I love that. I love that it's black and white with color. I think it draws your eye to what's really going on in it. Sometimes the black and white loves me not. Sometimes the black and white is just so, too busy. It's, it's just, got really unique renditions of the cards. Like here's the eight of pentacles. And when you read the book, it just, it, it, brings to life the card in a way where you're like, wow, I never thought about that card in that way. Not for all of them, but for a lot of them. Again, loves me not. Some of the cards are just kind of meh. And it tends to be in the major arcana. They tend to be trite. Like here, a skull and a death moth. Eh, it's not really evoking very much. But here in the minor arcana is where this deck super shines is like four of pentacles. Like that is, that's really an expressive card. Here we go. The devil again, just not just kind of meh, just not really bringing forward that archetype. Look at this two of pentacles. It's really, really good. The, the Karen and then the two stacked pentacles at the top. 
loves me not. Ugh, I absolutely do not like these court cards. Son of Swords. Let's put the Son of Swords right next to the Father of Swords. What's wrong with this picture? There is nobody old in this deck. It's like everybody is young and it just doesn't communicate the sense of wisdom and the carrying of self. It's like this was made to make children feel better about themselves. I, and that's going to sound really derogatory, I know. But I just feel like the court cards have no age difference and it just drives me absolutely crazy that everybody is like 30 and under. There, these people, are, that guy is not over 30. Sure, he could probably be a father, but it, there's just nothing. I'm so sorry, you guys. This is going to sound horrible, but there's nothing that says wisdom of ages to me about someone who's 30. You can carry that in you, but when you put up something that says wisdom of ages, to me, it's just, I, I need some age. I know. Go ahead. Haters going to hate. Hate on me. Go ahead. I would have been offended at that at 30, thinking that I was really that much wiser than I really was. But yeah. Um, but look at this Ten of Swords. When it comes to the Minor Arcana, this deck just completely shines. It just absolutely shines. Here we go. Again, two of them. Son of Wands. He actually looks older. The son looks older than the mother here. Although I do like this Mother of Wands a lot. But yeah, I do not like the court cards in this. I absolutely do not like them. And I have to tell you, because of that, I find myself not reaching for this. And I've actually thought about taking and putting this deck in purgatory because I'm just not reaching for it. And it's on my shelf, black edges. Look at that, so pretty. I love the black edges. Again, the book is amazing. I think if you if you have ex disposable income and you want to learn something new about the around about the um, Minor Arcana, great deck. This is one of my favorite Six of Swords cards. I would I didn't see it or I would have shown it to you. Oh, I have this in my favorite decks series. So if you haven't seen it or maybe it's not even up yet. Um, you should see it if you want a real walkthrough. This is by Ray Serafina Barker. Yeah, I love the backs on these. It's They're so pretty. Uh, the color palette, there's something about these images. They just transform me. It's so beautiful. The messages are really profound. Uh, I mean, this deck, I use this deck a lot, and but I use this deck when I wanna go deep. It's the Deep Place Oracle. And it really is something that is for when you want to go deeper on a subject. I cannot imagine doing a large spread with this because it's what comes through on this is so meaty. The book is really, really good. And again, I encourage you to watch that video because I really talk about it. But she's got questions, affirmations, practices. She's got the basics of the card. It's yeah, it's really, really good. And um, there's so many things that I love about it. Loves Me Not is that they're not numbered. And they are. Th there are three different types of cards in here. So in order to find the book, and you really should read the book with this one. You really, so that's kind of a Loves Me Not in a way, but I know that I'm getting into that when I come here. You really need to le read the book. But there are three types of cards and they're not in alphabetical order in here. <laughs> and you have to know what type of card is it above, below or liminal. And so I find myself having to look at every single one and I just am lucky if it's that <laughs> at the beginning of the list. That's really a bummer. Probably not gonna be any surprise, the Stolen Child Tarot. If you have this deck and love it, please let me know down below. So there's a PDF printable that I need to get. I, I got this deck. The backs are really pretty. I got this deck because the illustration style is so lovely, so incredibly lovely. I, I was immediately drawn in to this deck. I think she could have gone without the borders, honestly. I think the borders wash out some of the cards and it would have been really pretty if this was just not on there and just the white on the bottom to make 
that stand out. The illustration style is so pretty. I have to be honest, I haven't gotten into this too much. Um, and it's because of these weird discrepancies uh, that there are so many of the wands with flame that take place in water. And so it has, here we go, three of flame again in water. And so it, it has thrown me off, the salamander, a water creature. It has just thrown me off. It does, they don't make sense to me. They don't make sense to me. And I, what I need to do is I need to print off the PDF printable because I, loves me not, I wish it had a book. I just want to have a book in my hand. I don't want to be thumbing through pages. I'm going to have to print that off and then I'm going to have to staple it and then I'm going to be flip, flip, flipping. But what I need to do is I need to commit to pulling this deck out and going through it and going through it by card by card and reading the PDF and see if somehow I can get to where I feel like I can connect with the suit of flame because it just, I'm not connecting with it. And I get it. Like the suit of flame is about spirituality and creativity. And so it is very watery. It's just not what I associate with that suit. And that's a good thing. This could be such a wonderfully rich experience for me to really get out of everything that I think I know about tarot and grow me out of my own skin, which is always a great thing. I just, it's going to take some effort and some study. And I, I'm just not at that place Monica in my life Knighton. right now. So the Stolen that's... Child Tarot, Monica Knighton. Just absolutely. next up on my list. This is also in my three must have Oracle decks. These are magical Oracle decks is the old ways magic oracle by naomi cormack um i'm not going to super go into this a lot of you have probably seen that video oh my gosh the illustrations on this are so beautiful they really are gorgeous this deck takes me to deep 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 magic the book there's not much in there but you don't need it because it is so incredibly powerful. This is a deck that I turn to when I know I need to go into something that feels ancient. And so, yeah, you can, you can look at more of this. Oh, I'm doing them upside down. I'm sorry. You can look at this more on my three pre-magical oracles. My loves me not is look at how thin it is. There's just not a lot of cards here. And I have to tell you, I love this deck so much that I would pay big money for an expansion. Like even if she just did 12 more cards, I would pay like $30 plus shipping for it. I'm not joking because these cards are that good. This art is that glorious. I actually want to order some of her art. It's Naomi Cormack is just amazing. Um, look at this. I, this is like there's so much that has gone into this. It comes with this glorious bag. Uh, yeah, love this, but please give me more. I'm not sad that I spent the money on it that I did. Not at all, but I, I do want more. Please give me more. Getting to the bottom of my pack here, I realized that I actually had nine Oracle <laughs> and six tarot. So sorry about that. Just discovered that right now. Uh, so we'll go to this one, Song of the Grandmothers. I've talked about this on so many videos. I, I have my, this is in, in my, um, favorite decks collection. This is Song of the Grandmothers by Kara Simons and Marie of the Sky is the one who has, um, and it's got these blank cards. Isn't that interesting? These are actually always mixed in and I've never gotten one in all the time I've yeah, used this deck. Now, I this is a deck. staple. This deck is an absolute staple. Look at these backs. It's beautiful. It is a saturated color palette, but it's a non-shiny. It's a matte. The matte is gorgeous. The keywords are amazing. The book, I go into this more in depth in some, some of my other videos. So I encourage you to look at this in my favorite decks collection. If it's not out yet, it will be. And you'll get to hear why I love this so much, so, so much and why it's my favorite deck. But, you know, you've got these, these, uh, in dark, you've got what the grandmother says. You've got these incredible key words. You've got these images. So this is plants and animals and kind of landscapes. 
And to me, it, that a grandmother has wisdom that we don't. And so having these aspects that are depicted on here, plants, animals, landscapes, that are not necessarily anthropomorphized really helps me to receive wisdom from something that feels like it's way outside of myself, which I love. You guys are going to laugh at one loves me not on this, and it's kind of a big one. She's got to be young because the numbers on here are so dang tiny. <laughs> They're hard to see when you're older, and I don't have the best vision, and so... I know that seems like a silly thing because, I mean, other than that, this deck is, is just about perfect. Okay, last. Dun, 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 number 15. I saved the best for last. Earth, Moon, and Shadow Oracle. And uh, this, I actually ordered this off Kickstarter, so I have like the bag. I ordered the whole pack for this thing. This is an interesting one. I ordered this because it was eco-friendly. And this I, deck is so incredibly powerful. Um, the keywords on it are really good. Even though, like, the imagery on this, I completely connect with. I So memory and mind, many of you may not know, those are Odin's two birds. And then below it, it says guidance analysis application. So I love the keywords. I don't, I don't need to use the book but the book is great here's what the loves me not comes in <laughs> reaching over here to it the book doesn't fit in the box and you order it separately no that's a loves me not i i i want to have these together she could have printed this smaller and made it to fit in the box if you look at it like that you can see she could have made it smaller and just made it thicker and made the box a little taller and made it a done deal. Uh, I don't like that about it. Um, I love the unobtrusive borders on it. It actually is something that's really nice and I'll just go like this really quickly because when you lay them out, it's just a little bit of that delineation. So I really love that about this. For the final loves me not on this, and I have said I said this to Lisa. To me, this deck, I only pull this deck out because it is a shadow. It's it's earth, moon, and shadow. I only put, pull this deck out when I want to peel off my skin to get a look inside. Yeah, that's a pretty visceral little um, picture, isn't it? Yeah, this is like peeling my skin off. This deck, it goes so deep so directly, so powerfully that this can be a very painful journey to get in here. And so I have a love-hate relationship. The first deck I thought, oh, I'll do this shadow integration for my first read to get to know this deck. And it took me three days and I was exhausted at the end of it because this deck is a, is a working deck. It is a deck to work on yourself, to work on your shadow, which is powerful. Look, I mean, we just, look at this. Blue moon, opportunities, divine power, clarity. Look at her face. Like this deck, it, it just, I'm like getting teary. It just stirs me to my core. The witching hour. This deck will rip you open and tell you what's going on inside. And then you have to deal with it. You have to work with it. There's no denying. After you've pulled cards on this deck and read this book, you cannot lie to yourself anymore. So don't. Don't get this deck unless you're serious. I mean, look at that. The, the front is this crow with the eyeball in its mouth. You know, If you made it all the way to the end of this video, then you are, wow, you're amazing. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you. Just want to say that, how much I love the community on here and the idea of us connecting through something that is so incredibly soul-searching. Working with Cardomancy is not for the faint so, at heart. You might thanks start for being with. here. Go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. Um, and if you made it all the way to the end, leave me an eyeball emoji. If there's an eye, if you can find just an eye emoji, leave me an eye emoji down below, and that'll let me know that you made it all the way to the end. Until we meet again, ah, uh, you know. Uh, make peace with the things that you don't love about decks and just enjoy the things that you do. 